You know, one of the lessons we've learned from the Chinese government in recent years is that they will fight fire with fire and then some. To have $123 billion in Australian exports either banned, smacked with high tariffs or in jeopardy is a massive overreaction to Australians' call for an inquiry into the origins of COVID-19. And if you're a young upstart from Brisbane named Drew Pavlou, who's done more than most to protest against the Chinese Communist Party, you too will earn the wrath of party supporters. As Andrew has explained recently on this show, Drew was conducting a peaceful protest against the Chinese in London last July when he was arrested for allegedly threatening to bomb the Chinese embassy. He insists he was the victim of a fake email. And only two days ago, he was again caught up in serious allegations, which he says come from the same people. It even continued today. Drew Pavlou joins us from Brisbane. Drew, thank you very much for your time. You've been facing quite an extraordinary counterattack recently from who you allege are Chinese Communist Party supporters. Tell us what you were confronted with in London in July. Sure, thank you for having me on, Chris. Um, I was holding a peaceful protest outside the Chinese embassy in London. Um, and unbeknownst to me, when I was peacefully protesting outside, I was walking into a trap. Someone, whether it was the Chinese embassy itself or supporters of the Chinese government, they, they sent in a fake bomb threat using a Proton Mail. Proton Mail is an email service that obscures the IP address. It's, um, it's purported to be anonymous. And so they've created a fake Drew Pavlou Proton Mail. It's the equivalent of someone creating, you know, a fake Chris Smith 123 Gmail account, Chris, mm -hmm. and, you know, including bomb threats, including bomb threats in this email. They've sent it into the Chinese embassy. I was, I was peacefully protesting outside. The diplomatic protection unit, you know, come up upon me. They arrest me. They put me in a handcuffed stress position. I was in a stress position for three hours, um, interrogated at 4 a.m. without a lawyer present, exhausted. They ended up holding me incommunicado past midnight. So I was held for a total of 24 hours. And for a substantial amount of that time, um, it was incommunicado. So I was held in secret. You know, I was treated as a terror suspect. I was held in secret. I wasn't allowed to talk to a lawyer. I wasn't allowed to talk to anyone on the outside. I wasn't allowed to talk to the Australian High Commission. Um, so, you know, there are very serious allegations. I mean, th there are very serious concerns here about how the Met Police treated this. There's the British politician Edward Lucas. He's a former editor of The Economist. He's running for the Liberal Democrats, Democrats in the seat of Westminster. And he's actually made a corruption complaint on my behalf to the Met Police, complaining about how I was not allowed to talk to lawyers. I was not allowed to talk to the Australian High Commission. They held me in a stress position. Um, the Met Police treated this very brutally. And I was ultimately stuck in London for up to four weeks. They threatened, if you try and leave at the airport, you may be arrested. And so... It was about four weeks before I was allowed to leave the country. And that was really difficult because I barely had any money to my name. I couldn't live in London. You know, I was, I was there for one or two weeks. I, wasn't, I didn't know how long I was going to be stranded there for. I didn't know where I was going to stay. Had to get by through GoFundMe. And I came home and, sadly, the bomb threats have continued. Okay, hang on, threats. Drew. Can I go back to the child exploitation email first? We'll get it up on screen. What about it tells us that it can't be you? I mean, this is just this is just sick, Chris. This is not me. This is not me. They're creating fake email accounts in my name. I mean, the the absurdity of this ridiculous campaign. I mean, they're, they're, for example, the bomb threat in London. They signed it off. Regards, Drew Pavlou. This this disgusting email that they've they've um, they've tried to frame me for in Brisbane. They sign it off, you know, Drew, pa Drew Pavlou. They're putting my name in there. It's just a very str transparent trolling attempt. So you don't send emails without an ISP address on them? My Proton Mail is Andrew Redmayne at Proton Mail for the Australian goalkeeper. I love the Australian goalkeeper. Um, I've got a, I used to have a Proton Mail called Chairman G at Proton Mail as a sort of ironic joke. I've never had Drew Pablo at Proton Mail. None of these, none of these fake emails are me. My actual email address that I that I use in day to day life is drewpablo99 at gmail.com. That's on my Twitter. Um, that's what. That's my publicly available email address. None of these email addresses are me. They've framed me. It's very obvious that they've framed me. So what has this done, Drew, to your campaign against the Chinese Communist Party? Has this put you off? Has this frightened you enough to give it all away? 
I've, I've said the whole time, nothing they do will ever intimidate me. They will not succeed in silencing me for as long as there's breath in my body, blood is pumping through my, through my veins. They're not going to succeed in silencing me. This is petty mafia style tactics. This is, this is terror tactics. And I'm not gonna give in to this bullying and this thuggery. Um, okay, Drew, I've got to leave it there, but thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you, Chris, I appreciate it.